Peter Caldwell was your typical hardworking American trying to support his ailing mother. He worked as a waiter in one of West Virginia's most popular cafes, and though his pay wasn't so great, he loved his job. One day, Peter was working his regular shift at the cafe when he noticed a dog across the street through the cafe's glass door. People were walking past him, paying little or no attention to the poor animal who was staring at everyone with sad eyes. Looking at him, Peter realized the dog was hungry, so he got some leftovers from the cafe to feed him. When he offered the food to the dog, he pounced on it, and Peter realized the poor animal hadn't eaten in days. It's okay, slow down, there's enough food for you, Peter told the dog, petting his silky fur as he ate. When the dog finished eating, Peter gently cleaned his mouth with a tissue, and the dog began licking his palm to express his gratitude. That's fine, my friend, he said, smiling at the dog. Suddenly, Peter's gaze was drawn to the collar around his neck. Wah! Did you run away? Peter asked the dog as if he could answer. Then he examined the collar and found its owner's contact number on it. Peter called the owner, who turned out to be a 16-year-old girl. She was grateful to Peter for finding the dog. Oh, thank you so much for finding Chuck and feeding him, she told Peter. He ran away from my house a couple of days ago. I'm Layla, by the way. Peter here. Nice to meet you, Layla. Your dog is really cute. I fed him a lot of food, so make sure you don't feed him again. I'll take care of that. Thank you, she said and walked away. When Peter returned to the cafe, his manager stood there with his arms folded. Out, he screamed, perplexing Peter. Get out of here, Peter. You will view V being fired. What? Peter was puzzled. But Mr. Morrison, why suddenly, I mean, did I do something wrong? Well, Peter, I just watched what happened. You fed a filthy dog. Employees like you are not permitted to work here. I reported you to our owner and he told me to pass on the decision to you that you were fired. Come and collect your severance pay tomorrow. But Mr. Morrison, Peter said defensively, the dog was hungry and I couldn't see him that way. Besides, I was gonna go to the washroom and clean up before heading to the kitchen. Please, you know my mother. I won't repeat this, Peter. Out. Mr. Morrison stated unequivocally, leave, quickly. Peter had no choice but to follow his superior's orders. He left the cafe teary-eyed and wondering how he would manage his expenses now that he was jobless. His salary was hardly enough to cover their monthly bills, and now there was just his severance pay left. When Peter came to the cafe the next day to collect his pay, he noticed the owner, Mr. Jones, there. It turns out he had returned early from his business trip. Peter decided to apologize to Mr. Jones and urge him to hire him again. So he went right to Mr. Jones' office and knocked on his door, confident that his plan would work. Yes, come in. Your kindness will find its way back to you. Good morning, Mr. Jones. My name is Peter Caldwell. Would you mind if I... Peter stopped abruptly when he saw Layla there. You? Mr. Jones pushed his chair back and jumped to his feet as soon as he recognized Peter. If my memory serves me right, you're the same waiter who came into the cafe during his shift after feeding a filthy dog. Do you even realize what blunder you made? We could have lost customers because of you. Who do you believe would want to eat at a filthy cafe? Also, he paused. I'm busy right now, so leave. I apologize, Mr. Jones, but I was going to clean up and... Wasn't I clear enough? Mr. Jones interjected. Not another word. You've been fired. Take your money and get lost, he yelled at Peter. But Layla suddenly yelled, No, Dad, you're so wrong about this. Mr. Jones was surprised and Peter was shocked too, realizing Layla was Mr. Jones' daughter. Did you just raise your voice on me, Layla? Mr. Jones asked her angrily. No, Dad, I mean, listen, I lost Chuck a few days ago. You weren't home then, I was really worried. But thankfully, I found him yesterday all because of Peter. Dad, he even fed Chuck. Please, he's such a kind guy. Really? Mr. Jones' tone suddenly changed. Yes, Dad. Having heard what Peter had done for Chuck, Mr. Jones felt guilty for yelling at him. He cleared his throat. I'm sorry, Peter. That's your name, right? I, I was too harsh. I should have given you a chance to explain yourself. It's fine, sir, Peter responded with a smile. I only have one request though, I want to keep my job because I need money to care for my sick mother. 
can you please hire me back? Oh, of course, of course, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have. Actually, you know what? I'm promoting you. You deserve a promotion for your kindness and generosity. Anyway, I was looking for an assistant manager for the cafe, and I think you'll be a great fit. Consider this as my apology. Peter was stunned. When life offers you an opportunity, make the most of it, young man. Mr. Jones told him firmly, you've earned it. Also, be prepared to take on additional duties immediately. Peter was extremely grateful to Mr. Jones for the promotion. It came with more responsibilities, but it also came with a salary increase, allowing him to buy a modern wheelchair for his mother. Peter's mom had been confined to the bed after she was rendered unable to walk, but with the wheelchair, she could move around more.